Many people believe this is what will happen to humanity. So we have kind of, we have had some progress, some exponential progress that you can measure. Now this one would be the point in time, say, uh, for a metric like the number of people on the planet. And then we will see some peak and decline, right? So we will have this, this uh, strange kind of curve. This is what, <laughs> what basically some experts at New York Times and other people believe will happen to humanity. And I think nothing can be further from the truth. Um, um, at any point in time in the in the history, so say at this point in time, only a couple of years or decades ago, um, they could have drawn the same graph and it would look like this small blip here in hindsight, and it would be laughable, right, to have a prediction uh, prediction like this uh, from the New York Times opinion piece. In reality, human progress looks something like this. So over the century or uh, uh, centuries or even. Uh, thousands of years we, we we see significant growth in all areas of uh, life like even life expectancy uh, energy use um, percentage living in uh, safe environments and so on so even like war, war making capacity obviously um, but um, in many instances actually we have significant um, growth of metrics that could be used as a proxy for performance in some way or the other, right? And um, if you look at, say, the number of published research papers or so, it would look like this graph as well. So many of those graphs actually look like human progress. And um, in today's video, we are going to look at a specific um, um, problem or idea we have discussed in yesterday's videos, but yesterday I took 25 minutes, today I just try to give you the rough argument very quickly. Okay, so let's go to the summary. So here we have had um, we have we have discussed the cost to run humanities with AI and we are going to project only six years into the future so nothing too crazy right and um, we are starting with the human brains computational power which is roughly 8.6 petaflops and I will give you um, data uh, here here I've actually uh, done some research you can see the human brain is in the order of uh, eight petaflops. Some argue maybe 11 petaflops or so. Um, one petaflop, by the way, is 10 to the power of 15 floating point operations per second. And uh, you can find many research there. Let's go just go with the 8.6 number. And now we calculate the cost to run one human brain using NVIDIA A100 GPUs. And in reality, the cost would be already smaller because we have more, we have newer, AI hardware, it is always changing, it is always improving, uh, but at this point we can get an A100 GPU, for instance, for 10K, so let's confirm this. Uh, so here you see, we see like in Germany, we go from 5.6 to 14K uh, euros, but it would be similar for, for dollars. So it depends where you, where you buy it, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to pay 300K or 200K as a couple of, as you would have a couple of years ago, only 10K should be enough to purchase one a100 gpu to simulate the human brain we would purchase we would need to purchase seven so uh so we have seven nvidia a100s costing roughly 70k once this would be now the equivalent of creating the brain right so uh the human brain so um getting the child nurturing the child um getting into say 20 years or so full performance of brain power and uh, teaching it the stuff and so on. So right, I mean, preparing the, the, the biological brain and the equivalent today would be 70K in hardware. Obviously it's more valuable to, to have a human brain because it's just like I, I'm pro-human and, um, but you could, you could basically um, uh, replace much of the labor done by human brains using GPUs. I would say most of the labor could already be um, automated with digital brains. Okay, what is the power consumption? It's roughly 2,400 per year. So after the first year, say purchasing the hardware, this would be the amount of money we would need to spend to run this. So, and just, just as a comparison, if you calculate it per hour, so the hourly wage you, win, you would need to pay the digital brain is only a few cents uh, in energy, right? So we, so probably it's already cheaper to purchase the hardware for a worker than to train a worker, bringing them uh, through school, right? 
so the, the hardware of a digital art, artificial worker than to train a human biological worker, pushing them through school and universities like 20, 25 years. And oftentimes it's not enjoyable by the ones getting trained, getting pushed through the system. I know because I have children myself and so on and many of them and in their classes, they don't enjoy the process of getting pushed through the school and university systems. And... Um, And many would rather say meet with with their friends playing soccer and so on, right? So it's like it's not not like it's inherently enjoyable process of pushing them through school and, and stuff. Or at least I mean the school could look different, could focus maybe more on social context and so on. Okay, but so we need to pay, invest 70k to get it to push it into reality, the digital brain, and then you would need to pay only a few cents per hour or 2,400 per year to operate it, as compared to say 40 to 100K per year to actually pay the, pay the worker that is then only working eight hours a day and not 24 hours a day. Okay, but let's very conservative, conservatively look at only the first year cost, which is like 72K. It's significantly higher than the second year cost, right? Because the second year cost would be only 2,400 plus operating cost. So we have um, significant We, are, we can operate it significantly cheaper. So the cost to run humanity, which is 8 billion people, would, would mean 500 trillion, which is significantly more than a GDP. The, today's global GDP is roughly 100, billion, uh, 100 trillion. So the US workforce co is maybe roughly um, 21 trillion today. Of course, we have inflation and stuff, so things uh, get um, more expensive over time. But in today's dollar, we would need to pay 21 trillion to pay the whole US workforce. And um, good, so this would be the cost today to de deploy digital brains in the order of uh, collectively our human computational power. If you assume a 50% annual cost decline of for AI training, how do I come to this number? You can, you can do your own research, but for instance, if you look at charts like this, they indicate that we have even a 70% annual cost decline of um, by producing more units. We basically, um, this is called Wright's law, by producing more units, we, um, the cost per unit decreases by roughly Uh, 70% if you also consider the improvements in software engineering per computational unit. And, um, and this basically means that the AI training costs uh, get reduced by 70% every single year. Uh, if you just assume a cost decline of 50% every single year, uh, we would um, basically see the following chart. Our yearly costs would go from 500 trillion And these are only the first year's cost. It would be significantly lower in the second year, right? The first year cost would be 500 trillion to replace humanity, going to 8 trillion only, which is a fraction of the US workforce. And you can see this, this chart here. In the next, uh, in the next six years, we, we will likely see a graph like this, where the cost here, this, and the, in the red dashed line is the cost of the AI work, of the US workforce not the AI, the human workforce, um, in a given year. So all of them uh, collectively, what they produce, the cost for, the, for it would be 21 trillion. So we pay 21 trillion to get all, all the, all the um, human labor, basically. Uh, but if, the, uh, if, we, if we could create an artificial brain that is as powerful as the human workforce, not only the US workforce, the human workforce, And it would be cheaper than just paying the US workforce. I mean, it's, it would be a no-brainer, right? So in, in 29, we would have crossed this threshold and there's no way um, that the world looks the same as it looks now, right? And I mean, this is just a very simple projection. It, it is very difficult to even argue with any of the points I have, I have uh, um, presented already. But if you, if you, if you like go check or if you agree with with those points then you also need to agree that in 2027 2028 2029 we will see this crossing the chasm right where we where where nothing will look the same uh, it would it wouldn't make any sense for us to go to 20 years of education or so uh, because 
the, uh, collectively the AI computational power is so much larger than humanity's uh, computational power at such a lower cost and obviously we would spend trillions. How many trillions? I mean at least 20 trillion or so per year, right? Because if you spend 20 trillion per, uh, per year, we can, like if one e economy, like if it isn't the US, maybe another economy, maybe China, decides to spend 20K on AI workforce instead of um, human workforce, and they would smoke other countries that wouldn't decide to do it, right? So, so all countries, eventually, it's like a military necessity in a way, right? Because otherwise, like or national security i should say not only military but but collectively it's a it's a matter of national security to spend this money on ai on the ai workforce uh because you're just so much more productive you have such more so much more technological progress you will see the curve curves exploding right and we will see historically human history the energy use it looks the curve looks like this and it will continue to look like this. It, I mean, it is just irrational to assume it will collapse down to zero now, right, at this point. Uh, so it will continue to look like, like this. The exponential chart has just started and uh, it will continu continue to do so with all likelihood. And, um, and we would spend not only single digit trillions, double digit trillions on, on the AI workforce. Where will this money go? So, I mean, here the computation, you can see, we spent all this money on NVIDIA <laughs> GPUs, right? Or other, I mean, obviously there are other providers as well. So, but we will spend this money on computational units. This is the whole, the whole computation, whole point of this math is to show that we spend, we will spend hundreds of trillions annually for computing infrastructure because we are creating a new race a new digital race that does all the work for us and um, there is no way that this uh, will not happen right? and it's like we cannot the position to assume that that this will not happen is i think you cannot you cannot actually you cannot be convinced that this posi that this future will unfold i mean we can I'm not saying it's like 100% sure, right? Nothing is 100% sure, but it's much more likely than not that we will spend tens of trillion annually for AI hardware. And this revenue will flow to um, digital brains, will flow to the infrastructure of digital brains. Okay. So, um, the, as I said, the U.S. wages have 20, uh, 21 trillion. The global GDP is 100 trillion. The national debt of the U.S. is 31 trillion. So you see how significant the spending will be. Apple's market cap is 3 trillion. Currently, the market cap of Nvidia is 2.7 trillion, a bit less than Apple's market cap. Um, but you see, I mean, if we spend tens of trillion for for AI infrastructure, then paying like two trillion for the company for the leading company in the space that makes a 50 percent margin uh, at this point it's still like very cheap right it could be i mean if you spend 100 trillion on ai training on the ai uh on collectively on ai digital brains and maybe they have a 20 percent um market share then then they will have revenue annually of 20 trillion in this kind of future right that that is coming very quickly. I'm not talking about decades away. It's like years away, right? Uh, we might spend a lot for, for, for this kind of hardware. And, um, and probably in those years, we won't spend that much. This is not the prediction here. The prediction is just like, how much would it cost to replace the US workforce with a digital workforce that, is more, that has more computational power than collectively? Um, all human brains so having a like as a, as a smaller like as a country like the US you can now basically increase your productivity to the level where you are more productive than the world is today with your artificial brains by just spending in the future say 
32 trillion or 16 trillion. So the game theory would suggest that one country will do it. And then if one country does it, all countries need to do, need to do it eventually if they don't want to be the equivalent of North Korea or so. So, um, so all countries will spend it. It's just like it doesn't predict that in the year 2029 we will spend 16 trillion. But in the year 29, if we would spend 16 trillion, then we would basically dominate the global output and we would do dominate the research progress. So, so somebody will do it. <laughs> I mean, somebody will do it, right? And this money will, will uh, and this money will flow into the chip makers first, into the infrastructure first, and then obviously also in other companies. Like for instance, it's not only about hardware; it's also about software and the training software, the training stack, and so on. But Nvidia is also like a good play uh, for this. No investment advice could be another company, right? Another whole another company could emerge from scratch that does a better job. I don't think it's likely, but it could happen, uh, definitely. Okay, so I thought uh, maybe maybe you find this uh, this interesting. Uh, especially I wanted to have, have a, a bit shorter case for this, for this curve. I think this might be the most important chart. Understanding the nuances of this chart might be the most important thing you can do today to prepare for the future we will see in this in this de decade thanks for watching if you like these t kind of videos then check out the Finkster channel i have many such videos um, we talk about technological disruptions we talk about um, investment opportunities we talk about being on the right side of change like how to use api and ais to to leverage uh, your output and your productivity. So subscribe to the channel, give me a like and see you in the next video. Bye!